Sir, you are live in the session. We welcome all the participants onto the webinar, sir. Over to you. Shall I start now? Yes, sir. Please do start. Hello, everyone. And uh, warm welcome to all of you. Indeed, it is my great pleasure and honor to uh, speak before this gathering. Uh, I would like to extend my heartful thanks to uh, our president, sir, CMA Ashwin Dalwadi, sir, vice president, BB Nayak, sir, indirect tax committee chairman, CMA Rajendra Bhati, sir, and the entire team of tax research department for giving me this wonderful opportunity to interact with you all on this subject. As you all know, written under GST law is the important part of whole GST ecosystem. And that is why filing the correct return within the prescribed time period, time frame is very important in order to comply with the provisions of GST law. We are just three weeks before uh, reaching to the due date for filing GSTR 99C. And as you all aware, this is the last opportunity to provide the information pertaining to financial year 22-23. This return is particularly important from the point of view because as I mentioned earlier, this is the last opportunity to declare the transactions pertaining to financial year 22-23. And one more important aspect about the GSTR 9 and 9C is that these returns are, you are not able to amend these returns. So once you file this return, you cannot make any changes. And that is why providing the correct information in form GSTR 9 and 9C is very important. And from the experience of last five years, now we can identify what kind of precautions we should take before filing or while filing GSTR 9 and 9C. I have tried to, you know, bifurcated this session into four parts. In, in our first part of my presentation, we will try to understand the governing provisions of annual return and reconciliation statement. In second part of my presentation, we will try to see what are the prerequisites for filing GSTR 9 and GSTR 9C. In third part, we will try to understand some exceptional items. Consideration of those items is very important from the perspective of correct filing of GSTR 9 and 9C. And in the last part, we will see, we will try to understand table wise precautions to be taken while filing GSTR 9. And if time permits, we will also see GSTR 9C. So let's start with the governing provision. Section 44 of CGST Act provides for the filing of annual return. Further, Rule 80 prescribes three types of annual return to be filed by a registered person under the GST law. GSTR 9 is the annual return which is notified, which is prescribed under Rule 80 to be filed by every registered person. Rule 80 further provides GSTR 9A as an annual return in case of composition scheme in case of dealer who have opted for the composition scheme. Rule 80 further provides GSTR 9C in case of e-commerce operator, but that form is not yet been notified by the government. So these are the three important annual returns which are prescribed by the government under section 44 of the CGSTR. And the due date for filing this return is this one. 
Yes, yes. So, GSTR 9, GSTR 9A and GSTR 9B, these are the form of annual return which are prescribed under Rule 80 of CGST Rules 2007. GSTR 9C is the self-certified form of reconciliation statement which a registered person is required to upload along with form GSTR 9. So GSTR 9C is applicable only in case of normal person. It is not applicable in case of composition dealer or it is not applicable in case of a person who is filing GSTR 9B. So GSTR 9 is, an, is, is the annual return and GSTR 9C is the reconciliation statement. Annual return is nothing but the consolidated summary of outward and inward transaction made during the financial year. And it includes outward supplies made during the financial year, inward supply received and input tax credit away, and tax payment made by a registered person during the financial year. So it is nothing but the annual compilation of returns filed by the registered person. So normally we file GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. So GSTR 9 is nothing but the consolidated summary of GSTR 1 and GSTR 9. Uh, GSTR 3B. Whereas GSTR 9C is the reconciliation of GSTR 9 with the fin audited financial statement. Now we are preparing GSTR 9 based on the provision of GST law. But audited financial statement or for the uh, matter of clarity, financial statement, they are prepared under either Companies Act or under the Income Tax Act or any other law which is applicable to that particular entity. So provisions of Companies Act or provisions of Income Tax Law are different than the provisions of the GST law. And in order to uh, create the harmony, reconciliation is required. And that is why GSTR 9C is introduced, introduced by the government where we are providing reconciliation of details furnished in GSTR 9 with the uh, audited financial statement. In GSTR 9C, we are mainly reconciling the gross turnover and taxable turnover as per GSTR 9 with the turnover provided in audited annual financial statement. Then we are providing reconciliation of tax payable as per books of accounts with the tax paid in GSTR 9. Then we are providing reconciliation of input tax credit availed in books of account with the input tax credit availed in the GSTR 9. And if due to non-reconciliation of any data, if there is any additional liability, then that also we required that information also we are providing in GSTR 9C. So GSTR 9C is the statement where we are just providing the reconciliation of information uh, which is provided in GSTR 9 with the information of audited financial statement. And this written both GSTR 9 and 9C from the past experience of five years, we have seen that most of the litigations they are based on the form GSTR 9 and 9C. And that is why GSTR 9 and 9C act as the important tool for the government to do the assessment as well as audit under section 61 and section 65. And that is why it is very important for all of us to file uh, GSTR 99C in, in uh, to uh, report all the information in GSTR 9 and 9C in proper manner in order to avoid the litigation in future. So as I mentioned earlier, section 44 of the CGST Act governs the provision of annual return under the GST, right? And according to the class of person I have defined there are three types of annual return. One is GSTR 9 which is applicable in case of uh, a registered person, uh, every registered person. GSTR 9A is applicable in case of composition person, okay? And GSTR 9B is applicable in case of uh, e-commerce operator. But practically GSTR 9 after introduction of GSTR 4, it is not uh, 
uh, in fact, it is removed from the GST portal, right? And GSTR 9B is not yet uh, notified by the government. So practically, there is only one uh, annual return that is GSTR 9. So section 44 governs the provision of GSTR 9 according to section 44 of CGST Act, read with rule 80 of CGST rule. Every registered person is required to file annual return in form GSTR 9 and reconciliation statement in GSTR 9C except the following. So in case of this list, following list, GSTR 9 and 9C both are not applicable. So first is input service distributor. Second is TDS under section 51, casual taxable person, non-resident taxable person, central or state government department or local authority who are subject to the audit by CAN. So in this case, filing of GSTR 9 and 9C is not applicable. All person other than this category are required to provide, are required to file form GSTR 9 and 9C before 31st December of the next year. So for financial year 22-23, 31st December 2023 is the last date. Now section 44 also allows, also empowers commissioner to exempt certain categories of taxpayer from filing of GSTR 9 and 9. As per section 44, for financial year 22-23 also, a registered person whose aggregate turnover during the financial year is up to 2 crores, they are exempted from the filing of GSTR 9. Similarly, Rule 80 sub rule 3 of CGST rule, every registered person whose aggregate turnover during the financial year exceeds 5 crores is required to furnish self-certified reconciliation statement in Form 9C. So in nutshell, every registered person whose turnover is up, is up to 2 crores or more, he requires to file GSTR 9. And if turnover is more than 5 crores, then he requires to file GSTR 9 as well as 9C. So if turnover is less than 2 crores, only uh, if turnover is less than 2 crores, there is no need to file GSTR 9 as well as 9C. If turnover is in between 2 crores to 5 crores, Form 9 is applicable, Form 9C is not applicable. If turnover is more than 5 crores, then that registered person is required to file GSTR 9 as well as GSTR 5. So GSTR 9 is applicable when aggregate turnover is more than 2 crores and GSTR 9C is applicable to a registered person when turnover exceeds rupees 5 crores. Now in both the cases, if you see the terminology uh, is used is aggregate turnover. So what is this aggregate turnover? Aggregate turnover is all India turnover. That is already defined under section 2. So what is aggregate turnover? It is the all India turnover. So say if a registered person is having GST registration in five states and in each such state, if he is having one crore rupees as the turnover, then aggregate of all those registration is the aggregate turnover for the purpose of calculation of uh, this limit of rupees 2 crore or limit of rupees 5 crores. So in present situation, in, in the present example, if a registered person is having, uh, say, operations in five states where he has obtained separate registration and in each such registration, if his turnover is, say, rupees 1 crore, then aggregate of all five states, that is 5 crores, will be the aggregate turnover. So even if in that state, his turnover is le less than 2 crore, but his aggregate turnover is more than 5 crores, he requires to file both GSTR 9 and GSTR 9C in the financial state. So as I mentioned, it is based on the concept of aggregate turnover. So even if, say, in any state, turnover is nil, but turnover of other state, if it is more than 2 crores, in that case, you require to file nil annual return in such state where there is no term. Now, one more important aspect. Sometimes people are taking uh, registration.
for uh, till completion of their work and after completion they are cancelling their registration so in that case also if turnover exceeds 2 crores even if you have cancelled your registration still filing of gstr 9 is mandatory if turnover exceeds rupees 2 crores and 9c is also compulsory if turnover exceeds 5 crores now as i mentioned earlier this gstr 9 return gives you an opportunity to report the unreported transaction so if any transaction is not reported in gstr 1 or in gstr 3b in that case it is the unique opportunity for the taxpayer to report all such unreported transactions in gstr 9 and if tax in respect of those transaction is not already paid by the registered person in that case we can pay such uh he can pay that liability using gst uh, using form drc03 now it is important to understand that such additional liability is mandatorily to be paid through cash ledger only now in case as far as input tax credit is concerned it is not like liability in case of input tax credit a registered person is not allowed to avail the additional credit in form gstr 9 so one should remember that you can identify additional liability you can report additional liability in gstr 9 but you cannot report or you cannot avail input tax credit through form gstr 9 so these are the crucial point which one should remember while filing gstr 9 and gstr Thanks. Now let us explore what are the consequences for non-filing of GSTR nine. Broadly, there are three consequences a registered person may face if he is not filing GSTR nine or if he is filing GSTR nine beyond the due date. If a registered person is not filing GSTR nine, then he may get the notice under section forty six. of the cgst act read with rule 68 where tax officer may ask to furnish such return within a period of 15 days so this is the serious consequence if a registered person is not filing gstr 9 and 9c within the due date tax officer may ask then to file gstr 9 and 9c within a period of 15 days and that notice may be given in form gstr 3 if a registered person is filing gstr 9 and 9c beyond the due date now in present case due date is 31st december 2023 for financial year 2022 and 23 so in that case a late fee of rupees 100 per day for delay subject to maximum amount of 0.25% of turnover in a state so 100 rupees per day in cgst and 100 rupees per day in agst subject to maximum penalty of 0.25% of the turnover in that state now now cbic white notification 7 of late 2023 partially exempted late fees for certain class of registered persons based on the term so in those cases those registered person need not required to pay late fee at rupees 200 per day in that case they required to pay late fee at the reduced rate now let's understand what is this reduced fee so if turnover of a registered person is up to 5 crores so in that case a registered person is required to pay late fee of rupees 25 each in cgst and agst so effectively 50 rupees per day subject to maximum of 0.02% of the turnover so in place of 200 rupees per day if a registered person uh, turnover is up to 5 crores then he requires to pay late fee of rupees 50 rupees per day subject to maximum of 0.02% of the turnover now if registered if the turnover of registered person is more than 5 crores 
in that case it is 50 rupees per day subject to maximum of 0.02 percent of the term so this is the late fee which is applicable when taxpayer is filing uh, return beyond the due date now department may levy general penalty of rupees 25000 each in cgst and hgst that is 50000 for non filing of gst and mind and lines and that is why filing of gst r9 and 9c well within time is very much required because the consequences are very uh, <coughs> serious right so these are the consequences now let's focus on the second part of our today's session that is prerequisites for filing gst r9 now these prerequisites, you can also you can also say that these are the preconditions or pre-requirement for filing GSTR line. So one should be ready with all these requirements. Without these prerequisites, one cannot one should not file their GSTR line or GSTR lines. So let's go one by one. The very first requirement of filing GSTR line is GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B for the financial year for all the months must be should be filed by the registered person. If a registered person if he has not filed any GSTR 1 or GSTR 3B then portal will not open the window for filing GSTR 9 and GSTR 9. It will be freezed. So it will get opened only when you are filing all the pending GSTR 1 and GSTR 3 of that financial year. So this is the first prerequisite for filing GSTR 9 that a registered person must file GSTR 1 and 3B of that particular financial year for all the months. Now, if you have filed GSTR 1 and 3B for the financial year, in that case, portal will open the tab of GSTR 9 and 9C and you can furnish the information in GSTR 9 and 9C. Now portal is also providing you the functionality of auto population of details which are furnished in GSTR 1 and 3B in GSTR 9. But always remember GSTR this is the functionality which is given by the government and GSTR 9 is not only based on GSTR 1 and GSTR 3. It is also based on the accounts and records which are maintained under section 35. And therefore, whenever a registered person is filing GSTR 9 and GSTR 9C, he should first prepare the consolidated data for the financial year, which is which, which should be based on uh, GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, and accounts and records which are maintained under section 35 of CGST Act. Now section 35 of CGST Act provides for maintenance of different types of records and GSTR 9 and 9C is primarily based on those records. And that is why a registered person should prepare consolidated data, yearly data based on GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, and accounts and records which are maintained under section 31. Now after that a registered person must reconcile the outward supply and liability as declared in GSTR 1 and 3B with the books of accounts. In fact liability declared in GSTR 1, GSTR 3B must be matched should be matched with the liability of books of accounts. However, in some exceptional situation, there might be the variation between the books liability and liability which is declared in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. However, in such scenarios, registered person must prepare a reconciliation statement stating the reasons for differentiation of liability between GSTR 1, 3B and books of accounts. For example, 
suppose for financial year 22-23, if a registered person uh, missed any uh, 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 transaction to report in GSTR 1 as well as in GSTR 3. So at the time of finalization of books of account, uh, uh, he understand that he, he has not uploaded one invoice. So he reported that invoice in the month of April or say in the month of May before October 2023. So in that case, he is paying that liability in 23-24. So liability which is declared in GSTR 1, GSTR 3B will never match with the books of account. But in such situation, you must be ready with the reconciliation statement which will provide you the exact reason for non-reconciliation of turnover or non-reconciliation of liability as declared in GSTR 1, 3B and books of accounts. Now after reconciliation of outward supply and liability, a registered person First, prepare GSTN wise extraction of turnover, tax payable, tax paid, and input tax credit agreement. Now, this is very important because we required to file GSTR 9 for each registration separately. It is not the consolidated return for uh, the legal entity, it is GSTN wise return which a registered person is required to file. So particularly in those cases where a registered person is having operation in more than one state or within same state but having two GST registration number, in that case extraction or segregation of turnover, tax payable, tax paid and input tax credit avail is very important. Normally uh, entities they are <coughs> They are maintaining separate ledgers of tax payable, tax paid, and input tax credit availed for each state or for each GST number. But the turnover part is normally consolidated turnover. So it is very important uh, to understand that GST registration wise turnover is required as per as filing of GSTR mine and 9C is concerned. Then the next prerequisites is advance received and advance adjustment and invoice raised against the advance adjustment. So in case of advance which is received against the provision of service, then you require to prepare the advance statement which will prescribe how much advance you have received during the year, how much advance you have adjusted during the year, utilized during the year, and against which invoice you have utilized that advance. Then Reconciliation between income as per the financial statement versus turnover as per the GST returns is also important. Now, every every income which is prescribed or which is reported in the financial statement is not the supply or is not taxable under the GST law. But there must be appropriate reconciliation where we can reconcile the figures of income as per financials with the Turnover as per returns. Then GST law also provides you an opportunity to report the missed transaction till 30th November of next year. So while preparing GSTR 9 and 9C, a registered person should also prepare details of invoice debit notes which are declared in GSTR 1 and 3B for the period from April 2023 to October 2023, which are pertaining to FY 2022-2023. Similarly, if a registered person has reported any amendment in respect of invoices pertaining to financial year 22-23 till filing of return for the month of October 2023, then that details are also required to be prepared before furnishing details in GSTR 9 and 9C because table 10 and table 11 of GSTR 9 is based on such amendments. Then one more important point, <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we miss reporting any invoice or debit note in GSTR 1 
or in GSTR 3B. So in subsequent period, we may report it in GSTR 1 and we pay that liability to, through DRC 03 instead of paying through GSTR 3B. So in that case also, you should prepare appropriate summary which will state that these invoices are already declared in GSTR 1, but liability in respect of those invoices is not paid through GSTR 3B. It is paid through DRC 03. And this is very important because if you see GSTR 9C provides the rate wise liability as per books of account, right? And tax paid as per GSTR 9. So tax paid as per GSTR 9 is nothing but the tax paid in GSTR 3B. Now when you are paying tax through form DRC 03, portal will not auto calculate, auto populate those figures in table line of GSTR 9. So in that case, you require to manually report the difference in the reason table that this liability is paid through form DRC 03. And that is why this information uh, 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 readiness of this information is important as far as filing of GSTR 9C. In GSTR 9C, you require to provide rate wise outward liability and rate wise RCM liability. So that is also one of the prerequisites for filing GSTR 9. Then reconciliation of credit taken in GSTR 3B versus GSTR 2B versus input tax credit in the books of account. So post 1st January 2022, every registered person is allowed to take credit strictly according to GSTR 2B only. So if a registered person, uh, 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 so there, there will not be any difference between the credit taken in GSTR 3B and credit uh, auto populated in GSTR 2B. However, there might be difference between the input tax credit taken in GS in, in the books of account and taken in the GSTR 3B because it may happen that uh, some of the invoices they are not appearing in the GSTR 2B. So in that case, reconciliation of credit taken in GSTR 3B versus input tax credit taken in the books of account must be there uh, with the SSC because when you will furnish the information in table 12 of GSTR 9C. In that table, you require to uh, furnish the details of input tax credit availed in books of account versus input tax credit availed in GSTR. Then the next important requirement is bifurcation of input tax credit taken in form 3B as input, input service and capital goods. Because table 6 of GSTR 9 requires to bifurcate the information uh, of input tax credit in GSTR 3B as input, input service and capital needs. The next important prerequisite for filing GSTR 9 is ITC of current financial year availed in subsequent financial year and similarly ITC of previous financial year availed in current financial year. Now this is important from the point of view of GSTR 9 also and from the point of view of GSTR 9 CRs. In GSTR 9 in table 8C you require to uh, report input tax credit taken in subsequent financial year uh, pertaining to current financial year till 30th uh, November 2023. Let's say for 2022-23. Similarly in table 13 also you require to provide this information of ITC which is availed in subsequent year. In 9C also, in table 12B and 12C, you require to furnish the information of credit pertaining to previous financial year taken in current financial year and credit of current financial year taken in subsequent financial year. Right? So this information of spillover of the credit is very important as per as filing of both GSTR 9 and GSTR 9 is concerned. The next essential component is reversal of ITC of current year in next year. So table 12 of GSTR 9 requires a registered person to report the details of reversal of ITC of current financial year in next financial year till 
30th November of next financial year or filing of annual return, whichever is earlier. So effectively, it is uh, uh, filing of return for the month of October. So if you have reversed any credit for the financial year 22-23 before filing return for the month of October, in that case, summary of that reversal is also prerequisite for filing GSTR 9 because table 12 of GSTR 9 is based on the information of this reversal of interest. Table number 17 requires a registered person to report HSN wide summary of outward supply. And table number 18 requires a registered person to report HSN wide summary of inward supply. Now, reporting of HSN wide summary of outward supply is mandatory for financial year 22 23, whereas reporting of HSN wide summary for inward supply is optional for financial year 2000. 22, 23. Now, if a registered person, uh, registered person's turnover is more than 5 crores, then he requires to report HSN wide summary at 6 digit level. So, normally we know that Customs Tariff Act prescribes 8 digit HSN code. But in this table, you just require to provide information till 6 digit if turnover is more than 5 crores. If turnover is less than 5 crores, then up to 4 digits only you require to provide information in GSTR. So these are the various kinds of prerequisites that one should be ready with before filing from GSTR 9 and GSTR 9C. Because without this information, you cannot prepare correct GSTR 9 and or correct GSTR 9C. Now, Let's jump to the third part. These are some exceptional transactions, and you will never find this transaction on the surface. These are the transactions which you will find in books of accounts or accounts or records which are maintained by the registered person under section 35. And you will never find these kind of uh, this, this transactions in your return. So one should be very careful while before filing GSTR 9, he should check all these exceptional items and impact of such exceptional item which is considered by the registered person. So let's go by one by one. The first exceptional item is a reversal of ITC on a free sample. Now section 17.5 states that in case of uh, supply of goods as free sample, a registered person is required to reverse proportionate credit on such free sample. So whatever credit you have availed on such free sample, you require to reverse. So one should check that whether a registered person has provided any free sample during the financial year and if it is so, whether appropriate input tax credit is reversed by that registered person or not. That you should consider that you should check before filing GSTR 9 for the financial year. But it is important to note that when you are supplying any goods as a warranty replacement, in that case you need not require to reverse the ITC on such free supply and this is clarified by the board wide circular number 195 oblique 07 2023 dated 17 July 2023. So other than warranty free supply if if there is any free supply even if it is for the furtherance of your business still you require to reverse the liability on such free supply. The second important point from this checklist is reimbursement of the expenses. Now, this is also very important aspect. Many times we provide reimbursement of expenses to different person. But in that case, you should check whether 
the conditions as mentioned in rule 33 are made or not. If you are meeting with the condition of rule 33 of the CGST rule, in that case only, you are eligible to avail the benefit of non-payment of GST on the reimbursement of expenses. Now what rule 33 says, for example, rule 33 says that if whatever reimbursement, whatever reimbursement you are asking, that is on account of additional services provided by you to the recipient. Right? And such services you have given in capacity of pure agent. Now what is this pure agent? On behalf of supplier, on behalf of recipient, you are obtaining those services and passing those services to the recipient. So it is very important to understand that if you are fulfilling condition of rule 33, then only GST is not payable on the reimbursement of expenses. Otherwise, GST is payable on the reimbursement of the expenses. So one should appropriately check this reimbursement of expenses and applicability of GST on such reimbursement of expenses. And normally we see all this reimbursement of expenses in the other income part of the financials. Now sometimes we recover on account of delayed payment of consideration, maybe in form of interest, maybe in form of late fee or in form of penalty. Now in those cases also, you require to pay GST on such interest, late fees or penalty. In fact, this will be added into the transaction value of your goods. However, law has given you flexibility that at the time of getting that interest amount, you should prepare uh, invoice in respect of such additional consideration, which is on account of delayed payment. So one should also check that whether GST is paid on such interest late fees or penalty, which is received on account of delayed payment of consideration. Please note that liability to pay GST is only applicable only when you are receiving interest on account of delayed payment of consideration, right? Now section 143 of CGST Act provides a unique facility to remove goods, uh, to remove material or capital goods uh, from the premises of principal to the, uh, to the premises of job worker without payment of GST. Provided that such goods will come back to the place of principal within a period of one year or in case of inputs and within a period of three years in case of capital goods. Now, if input are not returned within a period of one year or capital good, goods, if it is not written within a period of three years, then it will be treated as deemed supply under section 143 and a registered person is required to pay GST on such deemed supply and uh, interest is also payable in that case from the date when his uh, he, he sent those inputs or capital goods to the job worker. So that is why it is very important for all of us to cross verify whether all the material, material or capital goods which are sent to the job worker is written within the period stipulated under section 143. That is one year in case of uh, material and three years in case of capital goods. Now, another important checkpoint is in case of sale of goods on approval basis. Now, GST law provides flexibility of six months in case of sale of goods on approval basis. In case you are selling any goods on an approval basis, in that case, you need not require to pay GST on such sale uh, if it is not approved till the period of six months from the date of uh, supply, right? But if 
within a period of six months, if recipient is not approving such sale, in that case, it will be deemed that supplier has approved such sale and a registered person is required to pay <coughs> tax on such supply. So we should check whether the invoice is read, raised and tax is paid in respect of those cases where neither material nor confirmation is received from the recipient within a period of six months. The next exceptional point is non-payment of the non-payment to the supplier within a period of 180 days. Section Proviso to Section 16, Subsection 2 provides that a registered person should pay the value of invoice that is uh, consideration amount to the supplier within a period of 180 days from the date of invoice. Now, if you are not paying consideration within a period of 180 days from the date of invoice, in that case, you require to reverse the input tax credit along with the interest. So one should check that before filing GSTR 9 that whether ITC on invoices on which consideration is not paid within 180 days is reversed or not along with the interest. And if it is not reversed, then we should insist a registered person to reverse such credit in form GSTR 3B along with the interest. Right? So this is very important checkpoint whether a registered person has made payment to the supplier within a period of 180 days from the date of invoice or not. And if it is not made within a period of 180 days, then uh, interest is applicable and reversal is to be made uh, before filing from GSTR Now, next important point is sale of land and building after completion. Now, we all know that sale of land or building after completion is part of Schedule 3 and Schedule 3 is about non-GST supply. So, in case of non-GST supply, one required to reverse the common ITC on input input services and capital goods under Rule 42 and Rule 42. Rule 42 is about reversal of ITC on input and input services. Rule 43 is about reversal of ITC on capital goods. Right? So one should check that in case of sale of land or building after completion, treatment for reversal of ITC is appropriately given in the returns. Next is sale of securities. Again, sale of securities is neither supply of goods nor supply of service. Both definition of goods as well as definition of services exclude the securities. So again, it is non-GST supply. So in that case also, we should check whether the common credit to the extent of sale of securities is reversed in GSTR 3B under Rule 42 for and Rule 43. Adjustment of income against expenses. Many times, what we do? We directly transfer the income amount to the expenses. We are crediting that expenses with the income. Typical example is recovery of say canteen expenses from the employee. In that case, we are crediting that recovery amount to the canteen expenses. So in that case also, we should check that whether GST is applicable on such income and if it is applicable, whether GST is paid on such amount or not. So this is very important prerequisite. Then Book adjustment for goods lost, stolen, and destroyed. Section 17.5H requires a registered person to reverse input tax credit in case of goods lost, stolen, destroyed, or returned on. So we should check that 
is there any inventory adjustment in books of account whether any inventory is written off whether it is uh, any such kind of adjustment is made in the books of account and if so whether proportionate itc on such goods is reversed or not that we should ensure before filing gstr time next important point is sale of capital goods now in case of sale of capital goods also section 18 of cgst act provides special treatment see it and it is like central excise law only percentage are different earlier in central excise law 2.5% per quarter reversal was applicable in case of gst it is 5% per quarter so in case of sale of capital goods a registered person is required to pay tax equivalent to 5% uh, per quarter uh, reversal of 5% per, uh, reversal of itc to the extent of 5% per quarter or tax on transaction value whichever is higher right so normally we directly apply tax rate on the transaction value that is on selling price but we miss to calculate the proportionate reversal amount from the itc taken because on higher side you required to pay the tax so whenever there is capital goods transaction we should ensure that ki tax is paid at the higher amount of tax on transaction value or itc uh, avail reduced by 5% per quarter whichever is higher similarly we should also see particularly in case of supply of motor vehicle taxation of uh, sale of uh, in case of sale of old motor vehicle is different in that case you need not required to pay tax on the transaction value you required to pay tax on the margin amount now what is this margin amount it is the selling price minus wdv of that particular motor vehicle according to the income tax law so we should ensure that the tax is paid on the margin amount only and not on the transaction value again this margin concept is applicable only when a registered person has not availed input tax credit on such motor vehicle the next important point is receipt of any amount on account of Uh, uh, on, a, uh, on account of agreeing uh, to do an act or uh, from ref, uh, uh, on account of refraining from doing any act or from uh, tolerance of an any act so in that case we should refer treatment as provided under circular number 178 oblique tail oblique 2022 which is very important circular particularly in case of liquidated damages earlier we used to uh pay gst on the liquidated damages okay but now it has been clarified that in case of liquidated damages uh gst is not payable so one should consider this important circular before uh reaching to any conclusion when amount is received on account of uh you know obligation uh, to do an act or refraining from any act in case of supply of goods to merchant exporter at concessional rate you you might be aware that in case of uh, supply to merchant exporter tax is payable at the rate of 0.1% but such concessional tax rate is subject to fulfillment of conditions as laid down under notification number 40 oblique 2017 so according to notification number 40 of 2017 a certain conditions are given in that notification like merchant exporter should produce the merchant export uh, registration certificate uh, to the juris jurisdictional officer as well as uh, to the supplier right so if you are fulfilling all those conditions then only you can apply that 0.1% rate right so one should check that whether all the conditions which are provided under notification number 40 of 2017 are met with or not and if not in that case 
registered person is required to pay tax at full rate. In case of recovery from employee, again, taxability of such recovery is, is depends upon your contract. It is the if it is the contractual liability, then there is no need to pay GST on such recovery from the employee. But if it is not part of your employee employee contract, in that case, GST is payable. And again, it is clarified in the circular number 178 of the tail of the 2022 that tax is pay tax is not payable when any recovery is according to the contractual obligation which is fined by the employer in the employment contract. So from that perspective, we should see the recovery from employee before furnishing details in GSTR line. Then delayed reporting of invoice, that is also important. Sometimes we report transaction uh, beyond the date of, uh, 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 beyond the reporting date, in that case, you require to pay interest on the gross amount when you are reporting such invoice in the subsequent period. For example, if you are, uh, if, if we take the example of say November month, so if you are raising any invoice in the month of November, so you require to report such invoice in GSTR 1 and 3B of November month. But if suppose you are reporting such invoice in the month of December, in that case, you require to pay interest on such invoice. So one should check that whether all the invoices are reported within the time period and if any invoice is reported beyond the time limit, in that case, you should check that whether interest on such amount is paid or not. We should also take the cognizance of credit note and effect of the same. Many times, Particularly, I have seen after relaxing uh, reporting of original invoice number and original invoice date in GSTR 1, many people now they are issuing credit note for the financial year beyond the due uh, beyond the time limit which is prescribed under section 34. Now, credit notes are issued in terms of section 34 in case of sale return or in case of deficiency of uh, any supply and law permits a registered person to issue credit note till filing return for the month of October or filing of return uh, annual return whichever is earlier. So one can raise credit note practically till filing return for the month of October or filing of annual return whichever is earlier. So you can say that for financial year 2022-23, one can issue and one can report any credit note in the return, maximum in the return of October 2023. So beyond that, no one can report credit note pertaining to financial year 2022-20. So one should check that whether all the credit notes which are reported in GSTR-1 are issued well within the timeline which is prescribed under the section 34 of CGST Act. And when you are issuing credit note to your supplier, you should also take the additional precaution. You should ask to your customer that they should produce corresponding debit note to the supplier. Because you can reduce your liability only when tax component is not passed on to the uh, recipient or any other person for that matter. So if you have passed on credit to the recipient and if recipient has availed full credit, in that case, you cannot raise credit note, you cannot reduce your liability unless proportionate credit is reversed by the supply. Similarly, you should also check effect of credit oblique debit note which is received from your supply. Because that will auto-populate in, uh, auto in your GSTR 2B. That will again auto-populate in table 8A of GSTR 9. 8, uh, 8, uh, 8A of GSTR 9. So 
if any credit note is issued by the supplier or debit note is issued by the supplier, you should also take the cognizance of that debit note or credit note in your books of account and in your GSTR money. Then next is reversal and recredit of ITC. So in many cases like section 16.2, provision to section 16.2 requires a registered person to reverse the input tax credit if payment is not made within a period of 180 days. And section is also allowing you to re-avail that credit after making payment uh, in respect of such invoices. Right? So in that case, you should check whether appropriate interest is paid on reversal of ITC or not. Again, this information is very much important from the perspective of uh, table 7 of GSTR 9 and table 12 of GSTR 9. And last point uh, from this exceptional list is RCM liability and ITC. So one should check that whether RCM liability is properly discharged on all the items which are covered under section 9 subsection 3 and section 9 subsection 4. Many times we miss to see the provision of time of supply. In case of RCM, tax is payable at the time of making payment to the supplier. Or if payment is not made within a period of 60 days, uh, 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 within a period of 30 days, then 60 days from the date of invoice is the time of supply in case of RCM. So one should also remember the provision of time of supply as well as place of supply in case of RCM liability. So whether RCM liability is properly discharged or not, that also one should check before filing GSTR liability. Now, there are two types of RCM liability. The first RCM liability is in respect of supplies made by the registered person. So in that case, RCM liability will be auto-populated in GSTR 2B. So one should ensure that RCM liability, which is deposited through form GSTR 3B, is more than the auto-populated liability in GSTR 2B. Because if your GSTR 2B liability is say 10 lakh rupees and if you are paying only 8 lakh rupees in GSTR 3B, department will immediately issue you ASMT 10 or notice stating that you have paid short liability in GSTR 3B in case of uh, inward supply which is subject to reverse charge billing. One should also check whether liability under reverse charge mechanism is paid on the import of services as per as transactions of foreign payments are concerned. Now here also when one should keenly see the provisions of place of supply because in many cases we have seen that even if it is foreign payment, even if it is foreign payment, but still it will not fall under the category of foreign uh, it will not fall under the category of reverse charge mechanism because place of supply is outside the India and if place of supply and location of supply both is out of India, in that case there is no need to pay uh, liability under reverse charge uh, mechanism on such services. So one should keenly see uh, whether RCM is paid on the foreign payments expenses as import of Services. Now, from ITC point of view, also we should see whether tax which is paid under reverse charge mechanism, whether it is eligible for the ITC or not. Now, eligibility of ITC is based on the conditions as laid down under section 16, subsection 2, and subject to the provision of section 17. So if it is eligible ITC, then only you can avail the credit. If it is not eligible ITC, you cannot avail the credit. For example, in case of rent a cab, you require renting of motor vehicle, you require to pay uh, tax under reverse charge mechanism on renting of such motor vehicle. However, section 17 subsection 5 
restrict credit on rental cap. So in that case, uh, you are paying tax under reverse charge mechanism, but you are not eligible for the IDC because that credit is specifically restricted under section 17, subsection 5 of CGST. We should also see whether tax paid under reverse charge mechanism and credit taken under GSTR 3B under RCM is matching. So one should not take excess credit, then what liability he has paid. So whether RCM credit is taken to the extent of liability paid under reverse charge me mechanism, this is also one of the important aspects which one should ensure before filing GSTR 9. So these are these are all the exceptional items. OK, many of these items you will not find on the surface. We will not find directly in uh, GSTR 1 or in GSTR 3B. But remember, all these items are very essential, are very important from the perspective of GSTR 9, from the perspective of litigation in future, because whenever department will come to uh, come for the audit or whenever they will do the assessment under section 61 or audit under section 65. These are the highlighted transaction uh, 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 which are very important. The cognizance or impact of this transaction is very important which a registered person or which we all should remember when we are filing GSTR 9 and 9. So this was the third uh, aspect of our today's discussion. And now we will move to the last part. That is table wise precautions to be taken by a registered person while filing GSTR 9 and 9. In my initial discussion, I referred that most of the litigation which we have faced during last five years are based on GSTR 9 and 9C are, or are based on the reporting made in GSTR 9 and 9C. And that is why we should be very cautious while reporting reporting information in different parts of GSTR 9 and GSTR 9. So we will start with GSTR 9. We will see general precautions which one should take while filing GSTR 9. And then we will see the specific precaution table wise uh, which one should take while filing GSTR 9 and 9. So as you are aware, that GSTR 9 is bifurcated into six parts and 19 tables. Right? So the parts of GSTR 9, part one is regarding basic details where we are providing basic details such as GST number, trade name, legal name, financial, financial year for which GSTR 9 is applicable. So all these details we are providing in part one of GSTR 9. Part two of GSTR 9 is regarding outward and inward supplies declared during financial year. So in this part, we are reporting details of outward supply which is subject to tax in table four and outward tax which is not subject to tax in table five. In table four, Along with the details of outward supply, which is subject to tax, we are also providing information of inward supply, which is subject to payment of tax under reverse charge mechanism. So that information we are providing in part two. Part three is about input tax credit. Uh, the details of input tax credit as declared in written files during the financial year. So input tax credit, which is availed in GSTR 3B, that information we are providing in part three of GSTR 9. 
and in this part you just required to bifurcate the credit you are not allowed to take the additional credit you just required to bifurcate the credit details of tax paid as declared in return filed during the financial year so in table 4 we provide details of tax paid during the financial year in the returns table 5 is regarding particulars of transaction for the financial year declared in the returns of next financial year so law is allowing you to declare certain transaction in subsequent financial year also till 30th november or filing of annual return whichever is earlier so practically it is return for the month of october so you are allowed to report missed transaction or amendment in respect of any transaction till filing of return for the month of october or filing of annual return whichever is earlier so all such information we required to provide in part 5 of gstr 9 and part 6 is regarding other information like uh, refund claim demand of taxes total tax paid hsn wide summary okay so all these things we are supposed to report in table 6 of gstr 9 we'll go uh, with each and every table and we will see what precaution we should take while publishing or while reporting any details in form gstr 9 uh, uh, in the respective tables of form gstr 9 but before touching to each and every table we should uh, explore some general precautions which we should take uh, while furnishing or while reporting any details in gstr 9 or in gstr 9 so first precaution is liability declared in gstr 1 gstr 3b and gstr 9 initially also i have discussed that liability which is declared in gstr 1 3b and gstr 9 should be same otherwise uh, in the scrutiny of return department will send asm detail okay and department will say that ki why there is difference in gstr 1 gstr 3b and gstr 9 and particularly when your gstr 1 is more than gstr 3b and 9 department will issue you show cause notice right so one should ensure that all the uh, uh, liabilities which is reported in gstr 1 is matching with 3b and is matching with the gstr 9 also now the taxable value declared in gstr 3b versus taxable value on which tds is deducted under section 15 particularly in case of supply to the government department they are deducting 2% tds now strange is that thing is that if they are deducting tds at the time of payment so it may happen that ki you are receiving payment after 6 months right so in that case turnover as per your gstr 3b will never match with the turnover as per the tds statement and that is why appropriate reconciliation statement should be ready with you before filing gstr 9 you should be able to identify that why there is difference in taxable value as per the tds statement and taxable value as per gstr 9 or as per gstr 3b one should also reconcile recently for financial year 2018 2019 some of the tax payer they have received notices from the department stating the reference of evb so one should reconcile the taxable value as declared on the evb portal with the taxable value as per gstr 9 or as per gstr 3 because after 2 years department will raise show cause notice on this point and in such cases they are directly charging section 74 saying that this is suppression of sale and that is why and there are number of reason because see every time your gstr 9 turnover and eva bill turnover will not match why because in case of eva bill also say uh, my value is less than 50000 i did not require to Uh, prepare eva bill on such transaction right so in that case eva bill is not applicable or sometime when i am 
sending uh, any material to the job worker, I am sending that material on delivery channel. Now suppose if material value is more than fifty thousand rupees, I require to prepare a UAP, a UAP in that in that case. But I am not considering those things in GSTR nine or in GSTR three B, and that is why there will be difference between the taxable value declared in GSTR three B and taxable value which is declared on the e in UAP portal, and that is why. Before filing GSTR 99C for financial year 22-23, one should one should immediately prepare a reconciliation statement between GSTR 3B and EAB. The next component is taxable value declared in GSTR 3B public 9 versus taxable value for e invoices. Now this is also very important. Because now EV e invoicing is applicable to a registered person whose turnover is more than five crores in any financial year from 1718 till date. So, if my turnover exceeds five crores rupees, if I am not reporting such invoice on the e invoicing portal, then that invoice is not the valid invoice as far as Rule 48 is concerned. Because in case of E invoicing invoice which is issued in the manner specified uh, in Rule 48 is only the valid invoice. So if e invoice number or QR code is not there on your GST invoice, in that case, government or department may disallow credit to your recipient, and that is why it is very important. For every registered person to reconcile the details of e uh, invoicing with the details of GSTR nine or GSTR three. Now, fortunately, for people whose turnover is below hundred crores, they are able to generate <coughs> e invoice. Even beyond 30 days. So, if you have missed any invoice, if you have not prepared any e invoice against any invoice, in that case, if your turnover is less than 100 crores, immediately prepare e invoice. Otherwise, your customer will lose the credit in departmental audit. As I mentioned earlier, GSTR 9 allows you. To declare additional liability which is missed in GSTR 1 and GSTR. And if such liability is not paid in GSTR 3B earlier, in that case, you require to pay that liability through form DRC 03 only in cash, not through electronic credit ledger. It will be paid only through electronic cash ledger. Then impact of last year transaction should be ignored. As I mentioned, GSTR 9 as per portal is auto-populated from GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. But GSTR 1, 3B may include transaction of previous year because till 30th November you are allowed to so you should ignore impact of last year transaction which are taken in the current year. Similarly, you should cross reconcile liability which is declared in GSTR 9 with the rate wise liability which is declared in GSTR 9. Otherwise again in, you will get the notice in ASMT 10 because department is directly cross verifying liability which is declared in GSTR 9 with the liability declared in GSTR 9. -C. Then taxable turnover as declared in GSTR 9C versus liability paid in GSTR 9. So whatever is the taxable turnover and rate was liability that must be matched with the each other. Then rate wise liability 
rate wise taxable turnover as per GSTR 9 of 9C versus taxable turnover as per GSTR 9. Now, if any liability is not paid, you should pay such liability in uh, through from DRC 03 in cash only. So these are the general precautions which one should take. Now let's go table wise. As I mentioned, the first part, first three tables are pertaining to basic details. Okay. So most of the details are auto populated. We will not discuss this. Now part two is regarding details of outward and inward supplies made during the financial year. So part two is regarding outward and inward supplies made during the financial year. Part two is again further bifurcated into two parts, table four and table five. Table four is about details of advance, inward and outward supplies made during the financial year on which tax is paid. So table four is only in respect of those items on which tax is payable and table five is in respect of those items on which tax is not payable. So table four is about tax payable, table five is about tax not payable. Now in table 4a, a registered person is required to report information of supplies made to unregistered person that is B2C and again source of the information of this table 4A is table 5 and table 7 of GSTR 9. Uh, table 5 and 7 of form GSTR 1 along with the amendment made in table 9 and table 10. Now this table is auto populated, but you can edit the information of B2C. Now what precaution we should take while reporting information in B2C table? Sometimes, sometimes we inadvertently report B2B transaction into B2C transaction. In that case, you should first rectify you should first amend B2C transaction and report that invoice into B2. You should not directly add such transaction in B2B category of GSTR by. You should amend that transaction first in table 9 of GSTR 1 from B2C to B2B. In case of any missing liability, you should report all those missing liability in B2C form. Now table 4B is regarding supplies made to registered person B2B. Table 4B, 4A and 4C of GSTR1 is the relevant table in case of furnishing of details of supplies made to registered person. Now again this is auto populated column, auto populated row, but you can edit B2B transaction. Now what kind of precaution we should take? Wrong reporting of transaction. Sometimes, particularly in case of deemed export, we miss that tick of deemed export. We report those transactions into the regular supply as a B2B. So in that case, you can, you should not directly change those transactions from B2B to deemed export. Rather, you should make the amendment in B2B transaction. You should amend those invoices. You should make appropriate tick in deemed export and vice versa. Right? And then only you should change those figures in GSTR 9. Now, you all must be knowing that in case of deemed exports, either supplier or recipient will get the benefit of refund on such supply. Now, unless you put that tick mark of deemed export, no one will provide you refund. And that is why 
instead of directly changing the figures from one head to another head, make the appropriate amendment in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, and then only you report such transaction in GSTR 9. Now, many times we wrongly report supply at concessional rate under the category of deemed export. Now, supply under the concessional rate of tax is also your B2B supply. For example, supply to the merchant exporter. So it is B2B supply. It is not deemed export. Or previously, we used to supply to the scientific institution at 5% or 12% rate of tax. So in that case, also it is not deemed export. It is regular supply. So <coughs> one should take the precaution that on the supplies, even if they are at the concessional rate, they should be correctly reported in the appropriate heads of the GSTR value. Next is table 4C, zero rated supply, export on payment of tax, except supplies to ACJ. Now, zero rated supply includes export as well as supply to the ACJ. But in table 4C, you just required to report details of zero rated supply on account of export. Zero rated supply on account of supplies to ACZ will be reported in table 4D subsequently. Now, again, source of information of table 4C is table 6A of GSTR1. Now, if you open table 6A of GSTR1, you will find that it includes information of zero rated supply with payment of tax, zero rated supply without payment of tax. ACZ supply with payment of tax and ACZ supply without payment of tax. But then what is the requirement of table 4C that we should understand? Requirement of table 4C is to report only those transactions on which tax is paid. So you require to bifurcate the information of table 6A into four parts and only information of zero rated supply export on payment of tax would be reported in this table. Export without payment of tax will be reported in table 5 of GSTR 9. So in this case, you need not require to report those transactions under the category of table 4C. Now missing transaction. <coughs> If you have missed reporting of any export transaction in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, in that case, you should report such transaction in GSTR 9. Again, precaution should be taken that even if you have not reported in, uh, say that transaction in GSTR 1 or in GSTR 3B, but please report such invoice on e invoicing portal. Because in case of exports also, e-invoicing is mandatory. And if you are not generating e-invoice number, IRN number, in that case, department may levy penalty on you. General penalty on you. Now, supply of ACZ payment, again, table 6B of GSTR 9. From that table, you can take the information, right? In this table, you just require to report information of ACZ on payment of tax. So ACZ without payment of tax, again, there is separate table 5B in which you require to report that information. So table 5B, uh, table 5 of GSTR 9 will take care of those transactions where tax is not payable. But in table uh, 4D, you require to report information uh, of supply to ACZ which is with payment of tax. Then next is deemed export. You will get the information of deemed export in table 6C of form GSTR1. Again, as mentioned earlier, what precaution we should take? We should take the uh, precaution of wrong reporting of transaction. For example, 
regular supply is reported in the export and vice versa. So as I mentioned earlier, in that case, appropriate way to report the transaction is to amend GSTR 1 and then make the necessary changes in GSTR 9. Because if it is a transaction of deemed export, if, if it is not properly reported in GSTR 1, then department disallows the refund in such cases. Next is table number 4F advances on which tax has been paid, but invoices has not been issued. So unadjusted advances of the financial year. Now advance uh, tax payable on the advances is applicable in only when you are receiving any advance on services. Advance on uh, tax is not payable on advance which are received for supply of goods. Now advance must be adjusted in the return. You should avoid direct adjustment in GSTR 9 because that will again uh, mismatch your GSTR 1 with GSTR 1, GSTR 3B with GSTR 9, right? So you should make the appropriate adjustment in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B and then only you should make the appropriate change in GSTR 9. Next is table 4G. 4G is about inward supply. Table 4A to top, table 4F is regarding outward supply on which tax is payable. Table 4G is regarding inward supplies on which tax is to be paid under the reverse charge mechanism. Again, you can take this information from table 3.1D of GSTR 3B. Again, it is auto populated table auto populated field, but you can edit that field. If there is any additional liability, you can report in table uh, 4G of GSTR 9. Now, while furnishing information in table 4G of GSTR 9, one should compare that liability with the auto populated liability in table 8A of GSTR 9. That is table, uh, that is GSTR 2A. Now, if Liability of GSTR 2A is more than the liability of uh, table 4G. In that case, one should identify what are the reason for such differentiation. And if any liability is payable, then one should pay such liability through GSTR 3B within the stipulated time period, time frame in order to get the input tax spread. If Time limit is over. In that case, you should pay, you require to pay that liability through form DRC 032. Then <clears throat> next is table 4R, which is related to the credit note issued in respect of transaction specified B2E. Right? So in that case, this information will come from table 9B. Again, auto populated information, but you can edit that information. One should take appropriate care here. Reporting of missing credit note in GSTR 9 without reporting the same in GSTR R1 and 3B is not permissible. Many times we have seen that people directly incorporating credit note in GSTR 9. Section 34 of GST Act is very clear. It says that you require to report credit note in the uh, uh, in the return of that particular month in which such credit note is raised. So suppose if I am raising any credit note say for the month of December, then I require to report that credit note in the return of uh, in the return of November month. Right. So return as far as GST law is concerned, section 39 is concerned. GSTR 3B is defined as the return. So whenever you are considering that credit note in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, then only you are permissible to reduce your liability, right? If if you are not you have not reported any credit note in GSTR 1 or in GSTR 3B, then statutorily you are not allowed to reduce your liability. 
so department may disallow in future reduction in liability if you are giving direct impact in gsdr line so try to not give such kind of uh, effect in gsdr 9 as per as credit notes are concerned now in case of debit note scenario is totally different in case of debit note tax is payable so instruction to gstr 9 says that he you can report undeclared liability but you cannot reduce the undeclared liability and that is why you can report undeclared debit note in gstr 9 directly but you cannot report undeclared credit note in gstr Nine. However, whenever you want to report any debit note, the ideal way is to report such debit note in GSTR one, then in GSTR three B, and consider such debit note in GSTR nine. Because if you are not reporting such debit note in GSTR one, your recipient is not going to get the credit. because it will not auto populate in gst tier 2b and he will he, he won't be able to uh, get the credit of such debit note and that is why the criteria as per as debit note is concerned is that you can you can report additional debit note which are not declared or which are missed in gst tier 1 and 3b but you should ideally go through r1 3b because your recipient will not get the input tax credit if it is not reported in the gstr one table 4k and table 4l is regarding amendment in supply not tax declared through the amendments so whenever you are making any amendments it will be made through gstr one it will be made through table 9a and 9c of gstr one now in that case also you just required to report what precaution we should take you required to report figures of only those transaction from table 9a and 9c which are having the tax impact so many times we report gst number of one person against the gst number of another person now if both the persons are located from the same state there is no impact on the liability we are just the changing gst number so in that case such amendment we need not required to cover in this table but on the other hand one person is from say maharashtra and another another person is from say gujarat in that case there is different gst number and in such case you required to consider such amendment in table 4k and table 4l so in table 4k and table 4l we will consider only those adjustment only those amendments which are having tax impact if there is no tax impact we will not consider those transaction in table 4k and table 4l right so this is table 4 table 4m is sub sub total and table 4n is the supplies and advances on which tax is a uh, tax is to be paid that is table 4h plus table 4m next is table 5 again identical table to table 4 table 4 was applicable is applicable only in case of outward supply on which tax is payable table 5 is applicable in respect of outward supply on which no tax is payable on which no tax is payable so like table 5a prescribes information of zero rated supply without payment of tax now in table 4c we have already seen zero rated supply with payment of tax now in table 5a a registered person is required to report information of zero rated supply without payment of tax 
without payment of tax. And again, source will remain same, table 6A of GSTR 1. Or GSTR 1. And field will be auto mobility. Now again, many times we report zero rated supply with payment of, uh, uh, without payment of tax in uh, under the heading of with payment of tax and vice versa. So in that case, again, the appropriate way is to amend such invoice in GSTR 1 and then make the necessary changes in GSTR 9. But if it is not possible in that case, in case of zero rated supply without payment of tax, if you have inadvert inadvertently reported in zero rated supply with payment of tax, you can make the necessary changes. In case of missing transaction, again, the same criteria is applicable. If you have missed any reporting of any zero rated supply in GSTR 1, in that case, you can report such transaction in table 5A. Provided that if your turnover is more than 5 crores, you have reported such transaction uh, on the e invoicing portal to avoid the general penalty for non preparation of. E invoice. Supply to SCZ without payment of tax. Again, same table 6B provides information of SCZ uh, supplies with payment of tax and SCZ supply without payment of tax. So, in this table, again, we are expected to provide information of supply to SCZ without payment of tax. Now, if there is wrong reporting of transaction, that is supply to ACZ without payment of tax is considered in supply with payment of tax. One can transfer that amount from with payment to without payment. But ideal, uh, ideal way is to amend such transaction in GSTR 1 and take the necessary correction in GSTR 3. If there is any missing transaction as far as ACZ supply is concerned, you should you can report such transaction in GSTR 9. Supply on which tax is to be paid by the recipient on the reverse charge basis. So if supply made by the supplier is subject to payment of tax under reverse charge mechanism, for example, goods transportation agency, in that case, they required to report such transaction in table 5C of GSTR 9. Table 5D, 5E and 5F are very important because normally, Whenever we are filing GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, monthly GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, we, we are not providing information of exempted nil rated and non GST supply. So, at least at the time of filing return, uh, annual return for the financial year 22 23, find out the information of exempted supply, nil rated supply, and non GST supply. And you will get this information from table 8 of GSTR 1, which is auto populated. And from that information, you can fill that information in this table. Now, there is thin gap between exempted and yield rate. I am not going to discuss that difference. But government has given you an option to report information of exempted and yield rated under the category of exempted supply for financial year 2022-23. As far as non-GST supply is concerned, you require to mandatorily provide that information in table 5UF only. You cannot cover that amount in the exempted category. You are just allowed to report nil rated supply under the exempted category, but you require to report non-GST supply separately in table 5UF of GSTR 9. As I mentioned, if any missing transaction if you have not reported uh, exempted nil rated or non gst supply in your regular return then this is the unique opportunity where you can report all those transactions in your gstr mind but the important aspect which you should consider or which you should remember while providing information in table 5d 5e and 5f is impact of reversal of itc under rule 42 and rule 43 Rule 42 and 43 provides for reversal of input tax credit on to the extent of uh, uh, turnover made uh, in exempted, nil rated, and non GST category. 
so in that case you require to reverse the proportionate itc right so whenever you are reporting this information in table 5d to 5f you should also con consider the appropriate amount that a registered person needs to reverse under rule 42 and rule 43 of cgst rules right so this is table 5 so table 4 is regarding taxable supplies on which tax is payable whereas table 5 is regarding outward supplies on which tax is not paid now let's jump to table 6 table 6 is about input tax credit first two tables table 4 and table 5 is regarding the outward supplies table 6 is regarding inward supplies on which credit is taken in the return. So whenever you are availing credit in GSTR 3B, okay, that credit will be auto populated in in table six of GSTR 9. Now six A is the auto populated figure from the table four A. And in table six, we just required to report the bifurcation of input tax credit as input capital goods and input services. Right? So table six A is the auto-populated ITC from table four A. And this figure is non-editable. You cannot edit, you cannot make any changes in table four A. And from table 6B, you just require to bifurcate this credit, which is already availed in GSTR 3. So it is just the bifurcation of credit. You cannot take the additional credit. So in table 6B, you require to report the credit which is available, which is availed on the B2B transaction. In table 6C and 6D, you require to provide the information of credit availed on the inward supply which is subject to reverse charge mechanism in table 6e you require to provide the information of import of goods including supplies received from acz in 4f you require to provide information of import of service in 4g you require to provide information of credit received from isd in 4h you require to provide information on other ITC which is reclaimed. Now, if you see source of the information, then it is table 4 of GSTR 3. Now, what precautions we should take while furnishing information in table 6 of GSTR 9? The first and very important aspect is regarding the reporting of credit under the capital goods because you just require to report information of capital goods and remaining amount you can report it under the heading of inputs but what is capital goods section 2 has defined uh, under section 2 definition of capital goods is there which states that what is capital goods Capital goods means goods, the value of which is capitalized in the books of account. So here we just require to report the information of goods, value of which is capitalized in the books of account. So many times in books of account, we are capitalizing value of input services also. For example, if I have purchased any machinery, say I am paying for machinery, I am paying separately, and for installation and commissioning, I am paying separately. Now I am capitalizing both the information under the heading of plant and machinery. But as far as reporting in table 6 is concerned, you just require to report the value of goods, not the value of service. So value of service will go under the heading of input services. So one should always remember that capitalization as per books of account is the different concept 
capitalization as per or capital goods as per gst law is the different book. so reporting of correct figure in capital goods is very much essential one should also remember that no one is you are not allowed to avail the additional credit in table 6 of gstr 9 you are just required to provide the bifurcation you are not allowed to make the uh, you are not allowed to take the additional credit in gstr 9 one should also consider the impact of reporting of credit after changes made in gstr 3b from august 2022 right and post such changes department has also issued one circular circular number 170 oblique 02 oblique 2022 okay which says that you should take credit strictly according to the gstr 2b right so for example if any credit which is ineligible but appearing in gstr 2b in that case what this circular is saying ki you avail that credit in all other itc right and you reverse that credit in table 4b of gstr 3 so whenever you are reporting any information in table 6 you should also take the cognizance of circular number 170 oblique 02 oblique 2022 so table 6 is only about is only about bifurcation of credit which is reported in gstr 3b and whenever you are reporting credit in table 6 you should consider all these points now as far as reporting of rcm credit is concerned or reporting of credit on isd is concerned one should remember that rcm credit should not be more than rcm liability in exceptional cases, it may happen that your RCM liability is less and uh, RCM credit of previous year you have taken in the current year. But in normal circumstances, your RCM credit should not be more than the RCM liability. Similarly, credit taken on ISD invoices should not be more than the credit, credit auto-populated in GSTR 2B against the ISD invoices. Right? That precaution one should take while reporting figures under table, uh, table number 6f and table number 6g amount of itc reclaimed under the provisions uh, provision of act now we have already seen proviso to section 16 subsection 2 which states that if payment is not paid within the within a period of 180 days in that case you require to reverse that credit and whenever you will make the payment you will again reclaim that credit so all such credit will come under the heading of 6H. Here also impact of reporting of credit uh, according to circular number 170 of 2 of 2022 is very important because many cases like uh, if you have not received any goods but credit is auto populated in GSTR to be circular is saying that you avail that credit in table 4A and you reverse that credit in table 4B. Right? Now this is going to uh, create huge mess as far as reconciliation of table 8c is uh, table 8a is concerned because we are calculating two times same credit right and there is no option to uh, in, in table 8c there is no option of uh, reversal and that is why this is going to this circular itself is going to create huge mess in future so whenever you are uh, reporting any information in table 6H, you should also take the cognizance of circular number 170 oblique 02 oblique 2022. Table 4K and 4L is uh, 4K and 4L is regarding uh, transitional credit. So it is it was having limited applicability of financial year 17, 18 and uh, for the financial year 17, 18. But uh, post judgment of Supreme Court. Uh, for financial year 2022-23 also it is having limited applicability. So in that case you can take those figures from the Trano and return and you can appropriately report all those things in this table. Then other ITC uh, which is availed but not specified like in case of transfer of business you transfer the credit through ITC 02. So all such information you require to report in this table.
Now next is table seven. Again, same. It is nothing but the replica of table four B of GSTR three B. You just require to bifurcate the credit in the different headings like rule thirty seven reversal, where payment is not paid within one eighty days. In that case, uh, you re uh, you reporting those credits in table four B. Uh, of GSTR 3B, right? But in case of GSTR like you require to bifurcate that credit uh, under Rule 37. Rule 39 is in case of ISD credit. Rule 42, 43 already we have explained it is uh, reversal of common credit on input and input services, right? Section 75, if you have availed any ineligible credit, then you require to reverse that ineligible credit under Section 17.5. Uh, reversal of Tran 1, Tran 2 credit or other reversal, if any, that you require to bifurcate in this table. Again, you just require to bifurcate credit reverse as per table 4B uh, of GSTR 3B in this table. You are not allowed to make the additional reversal through this table. So additional reversal of ITC is not allowed in this table. Again, impact of uh, reporting of credit. Uh, according to circular number 170 oblique 02 oblique 2022 should be considered while reporting details in table 7. Th that is very important. Uh, I'll skip this slide uh, uh, as we are running short of time. Table 8 is also very important and most of the cases, most of the litigations we have seen only from this table only. And that is why it is very essential to understand this table. Table 8A provides the auto populated information of GSTR 2A. So for financial year 2022-23, details of 8A is updated on 30th November. From 1st November, figures which are updated, uh, which are uploaded by the supplier till 30th November are now auto populated in table 8A of GSTR. Uh, nine, right? So table eight A is auto populated table. Table eight B is ITC as per the sum total of six B and six H. So it is nothing but the all other ITC which we have availed in GSTR three B, right? Table eight C is regarding ITC of current financial year that is twenty two twenty three availed in subsequent financial year, right? And table 8D calculates the difference between 8A minus 8B and 8C. Now the biggest limitation of this table is that credit pertaining to previous financial year, said financial year 21-22, which I have availed in 22-23, that is not covered or that is not incorporated in table 8C which amounts to difference in the information of GSTR 2A and uh, all other ITC which I have availed in GSTR 3 b Now in this case, many practitioners, they are following the rule of netting. Whenever they are uh, providing information in table 8C, they are providing net of opening credit that is credit of previous financial year less credit of current financial year. That information they are providing here. But I would urge, I would request you here to provide the additional clarification in GSTR 9C through an attachment stating that we have, cal we have taken figure in table 8C net of opening credit because there is no facility to report the previous year credit taken in the current financial year. Now, <coughs> impact of reporting of credit as per 170 to 170 oblique 02 is also going to create huge mess in future. Because this 170 is stating that you take credit according to GSTR to be, you reverse that credit and again retake that credit. Now, unfortunately, in table 8, you will not find the impact of reversal of ITC. Nowhere they have considered the impact of table 7, that is reversal of ITC, and that is why the difference will get increased. 
and it is very difficult for the assessee to convince the department official on the difference amount of table 8d 8d and that is why while filing gstr 9 i would urge you to prepare one separate reconciliation statement and attach that reconciliation statement as the attachment to your gstr 9c there is facility in gstr 9c to attach additional document so there you attach your additional reconciliation whereby you can communicate to department that this difference is because of say opening credit of previous financial year which is taken in the current financial year or this difference is because of uh, because of the impact of recredit which is taken according to circular number 170 oblique to oblique 2020 right so this is table 8 and this is table 8b 8c and 8d again difference of table 8d we will bifurcate in table e and f as itc not available or itc eligible uh, available but ineligible right in table 8g we are providing information of igst paid on import of goods right now again you should uh, uh, you should match dot that create uh, that uh, igst paid on import of goods with the information which is provided on the ice gate portal table 8h provides the information of igst availed on the import of goods right now in this case again there may be the case where you have availed the uh, import credit pertaining to previous financial year in current financial year so in that case there might be difference between table 8g and table 8h right so <laughs> table ag uh, in table ag we required to provide information of uh, igst paid on import of goods whereas in table 8h we are providing information of itc avail on import of goods and table i calculates difference between igst paid and igst credit taken so there might be difference because sometime Uh, you pay igst but you are not receiving those goods in your factory or in your uh, place of business you are availing that credit in subsequent financial year that is okay right so there might be difference between the table 8g and table 8h then this is table 9 which is regarding tax paid as per return so tax payable amount is editable as mentioned earlier you can report additional liability but tax paid which is provided in column number 3 to 7 is non editable it is auto populated you cannot make any changes in part 5 in table 10 and 11 we are allowed to provide information pertaining to supplies of previous financial year which are amended in current financial year till 30th november of next financial year so for financial year 22 23 if you have amended any information till 30th november 2023 in gstr 1 in table 9a and 9c then all such amendments along with debit credit notes you can report in this table so only precaution which you require to take is that only amendments made in respective table should be reported in this table if you have not made any amendments you cannot uh, post such entries in this table again this table is mandatory table 12 and 13 is regarding reversal of itc availed during previous financial year so in last financial year if you have availed any credit but you have reversed that credit till 30th november then you required to report such information in table 4b for example uh, rule 37a states that if uh, any invoice is auto populated in gstr 2b but tax in respect of such invoice is not paid by the registered person till 30th uh, uh, till 31st october 2023 in that case you required to reverse such transaction in the month of october okay so all such reversal information 
all uh, 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 information in respect of such invoices on which you have availed credit in 22 23 you required to mention such information uh, in table 12 of gstr uh, 9 table 13 is again extended version of your table 8c in table 8c we are just allowed to provide the information in respect of credit which is b2b in table 13 we are providing information of itc which is available for the previous financial year which Hello. Sorry, due to some network connectivity, I'm disconnected. So, in, there is basic difference between table 8 and table 13. Now, table 13 includes information of entire ITC which is pertaining to previous financial year, whereas table 8C contains information only in respect of B2B transaction. Right. So in table 13, we will report entire credit, which includes credit of import of goods, which is pertaining to previous financial year, but taken in current financial year. Credit of RCM, which is pertaining to previous financial year. Tax is paid in previous financial year, but credit is taken in current financial year. And B2B transaction, which is pertaining to previous financial year, but credit is taken in current financial year. But for financial year 22-23, government has given an option to report uh, you may report uh, in uh, uh, figures in table 12 or table 13, or you may skip those figures also. Table 14 is applicable uh, in case of differential value, which we have declared in table 10 and table 11, right? Part 5 is regarding particulars of demands and refund. Again, this is optional table for financial year 22-23. You need not require to provide the information in table 15. Uh, it is pertaining to refund claimed, refund sanction, rejected, pending. That information you require to provide in table 15A to 15D. If you have applied for the refund and if you are if you have received the deficiency memo, in that case, it will not be treated as the refund rejected, right? In that case, you require to again uh, file a refund claim application, so that will not cover under the total. Or uh, in that case, that application will not will also not be considered as the uh, under the heading of total refund claim. Similarly, total demand of taxes uh, includes only those cases where <coughs> show cause notice is being issued by the authority, right? So if you have received any letter from the department, if you have received any ASMT 10 notice, DRC 01A, that will not be considered as the demand of taxes, okay? Demand of taxes will be considered only when show cause notice is issued by the adjudicating authority. Table number 16 is regarding supplies received from composition taxpayer deemed supply under section 143 goods sent on approval basis again this this is optional table 
table 17 is very important because that is uh, as per, uh, that is applicable in case of uh, that, that there you required to provide the hsn wise summary right hsn wise summary of outward supplies now hsn wise summary of outward supplies is mandatory table for financial year 22 23 HSN wise summary of inward supplies is optional table for financial year 22-23. So whenever you are reporting information in HSN wise summary of outward supplies, you should check whether classification is done correctly or not. Please note that in future we are going to see cases only on the classification issues, right? Many people they have given least importance to the classification, right? So in near future, uh, we are going to see in many cases, uh, GST Council, they have changed. For example, in case of scrap earlier, in many cases, scrap rate, uh, tax rate was 5%. Now tax rate is increased to 18% from 5%, right? So you should take the appropriate care while reporting information in GSTR, uh, 9 in table 17 as per as classification or as per as reporting of HSNY summary of outward supply is considered. One more important aspect while reporting information in HSNY summary of outward supplies, uh, many times we are not taking the cognizance of credit notes and debit notes which are issued by the uh, registered person. Now in absence of uh, taking that impact of debit and credit note, your gross liability according to the adjacent table will vary with the uh, uh, gross liability of, uh, uh, with the liability which is declared in table uh, 4 and 5 of GSTR 9 and table 9 of uh, GSTR 9C, right? So that is why a registered person should take the impact of debit and credit note in order to avoid the future litigation as per as uh, reporting of HSN wise summary of outward supply is concerned. So these are all the tables of GSTR 9 and uh, uh, appropriate precautions which a registered person should take while filing GSTR 9. So uh, uh, unfortunately we are running out of time. So I'm not able to uh, uh, discuss the table wise analysis of GSTR 9C. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your patient full listening. Now I hand over to the organizer to take forward. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your time and we thank the participants for their participation as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.